yeah, 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 yeah. Ay, 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 ay. Ah, huh? I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. She has come out of the other legs. But these ones have become strong. She has come out of the other legs. But these ones have become strong and stiff. She has left these legs. Rudy Kong, Kuja too. But the weak legs, the legs that were soft, 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 weak, have become stiff and strong. Aceptame como ofrenda de amor, como un sacrificio agradable en tu amor. Grato perfume, yo quiero ser Señor. Aleluya. What a mighty day today. What a wonderful day. Nesiku kuu kia sigani leo hi. Today is the day the Lord has created. Leo ni siku ambayo Bwana ameumba. And it's a blessed day. Na ni siku iliyobarikiwa. It's an awesome blessed day. Ni siku ya ajabu iliyobarikiwa. I'll be teaching on uh, the process that you go through when you are a Christian to polish you. Nitakuwa ninafunza kuhusu ile hatua au mfululizo unaopitia ili ukue katika Ukristo wako to become more mature. Hivi kwamba ufanyike mkomavu zaidi. The processing that God passes you through as a Christian. Zile hatua ambazo Bwana anakupitisha kama mkristo. In the book of Exodus today I'll be looking at uh, what does it take for you to get close to God. Katika kitabu cha kutoka na leo ninaenda kutazama kuhusu itakugarimu nini ili uweze kusongea karibu na Mungu. I'll be looking at the processes you go through and that you need to go through in order to encounter God. Nita kuwa nikiongea kuhusu zile hatua ambazo unapitia hivi kwamba uweze kukutana naye Mungu so that you can grow in the holy spirit hivi kwamba ukakue katika roho mtakatifu i want you to understand ningalipenda uelewe that uh, the first thing that happens kwamba kitu cha kwanza kinachotendeka when you become a christian wakati unafanyika mkristo is that you become young again ni kwamba unakuwa mchanga mara nyingine tena when you receive the lord you become young again wakati unampokea bwana unakuwa mchanga tena so you become a young christian kwa hivyo unafanyika mkristo mchanga and it's very important as a young christian that you grow na ni muhimu sana kama mkristo mchanga kwamba upate kukua it's extremely important that you grow in christ jesus through the works of the holy spirit na ni muhimu kabisa kwamba uanze kukua katika kristo yesu kupitia kwa kazi ya roho mtakatifu and that process of growing na ile hatua ya kukua involves a few changes that take place in your life inahusisha mabadiliko kadhaa ambayo yanafanyika katika maisha yako so it's very important for us to understand that when you become a christian kwa hivyo ni muhimu sana kwetu kuelewa kwamba unapofanyika mkristo you have to go through a process itabidi upitie katika hatua fulani now one of the biggest problems that we have had in church na sasa moja wapo ya shida kubwa kabisa ambayo tumekuwa nayo katika kanisa why even the church is where it is is because sababu inayofanya kwamba kanisa liko mahali pale lilipo sasa hivi ni kwa sababu the church has not been able to help us grow as christians kanisa halijaweza kutusaidia kukua kama wakristo the church itself has not grown because you are the church kanisa lenyewe halijakuwa manake wewe ndiwe kanisa i want you to understand that when you become a christian kwa hivyo nataka upate kuelewa kwamba ukishafanyika mkristo you become a new creation unakuwa kiumbe kipya and so there is need for you to grow in the holy spirit na kwa hivyo kuna hitaji kwako kukua katika roho mtakatifu there is need for you to grow in walking with christ kuna 
kuhitaji kwako wewe kukua katika mtembeo wako na Kristo. So you can become mature even as in receiving the Holy Spirit. Hivi kwamba ukakomae hata pale katika kumpokea Roho Mtakatifu. After receiving the Holy Spirit, then you can go ahead and do all those things that appertain to being a Christian. Baada ya kumpokea Roho Mtakatifu, basi unaweza kuendelea na kufanya haya mambo yote yanayomhusu Mkristo. But today I'll focus on a personal basis on you and your heart, the heart of the church. So it is really your heart. Kwa hivyo kwa hakika ni moyo wako that you give to the Lord and we'll look at the heart today and the issues of the heart. Ambao unampatia Bwana na tutatazama moyo leo na maswala ya pasayo moyo as relating to how you grow up as a Christian. Na kuhusiana na jinsi unavyokuwa kama Mkristo. So when I talk to you and I talk to this country and say look kwa hivyo wakati naliwanenea na nikanenea inji hii nikasema tazama the lord has prepared you as a vessel of honor bwana amewanda kama chombo cha heshima the lord has marked you bwana amewaweka alama and prepared to use you na kujiandaa kuwatumia as a vessel of honor to transform to change the other nations of the world kama chombo cha heshima kubadilisha na kugeuza kubadilisha mataifa mengine ya dunia to change the other people of the world kubadilisha watu wengine wa dunia to change the other provinces kubadilisha mikoa mingine that means it is your heart inamaanisha huo ni moyo wako that the lord has marked so that vessel that i was talking about as a golden vessel ambayo bwana ameweka alama kwa hivyo hicho chombo cha dhahabu ambacho nilikuwa ninanena kuhusu is essentially your heart the lord was talking about msingi ni moyo wako ambao bwana alikuwa ananena kuhusu but let us look back in the old testament lakini kwanza hebu tutazame agano la kale and see the ways of the same jehovah god na tuone njia zile zile za huyu mungu mmoja yehova mungu his ways that do not change njia zake zisizobadilika Let us look back and ask ourselves. Hebu tutazame na tujiulize. How did God cleanse those people? Bwana aliwatakasa vipi watu hawa? When they became his own. Wakati walifanyika wake binafsi. The process of sanctification is essentially to clean you up. Hatua ya utakaso kimsingi ni ya kukusafisha wewe. And if you are not cleaned up well, na kama haujasafishwa inavyopasa, you always end up recycling back to sin. Kila wakati unaishia kurudi katika dhambi. Back to the world. Kurudi katika dunia. And that is the process God does not want you to go through. Na hiyo ndio hatua ambayo Bwana hataki upitie. Of recycling back. Ya kurudi katika dhambi. We have read scriptures like Hebrews chapter 6 verses 4 to 6 which say Tumesoma maandiko kama waraka wa Ibrania mlango wa sita mstari wa ine hadi sita unaosema It is impossible which means it's not possible Haiwezekani kumaanisha haiwezekani for you to come receive Christ kwako wewe kukuja kumpokea Kristo be born again uzaliwe tena and then recycle back to sin alafu rudi tena katika dhambi Hebrews 4:46 says Waibrania 4:4 ine hadi sita inasema you cannot be brought back to repentance hauwezi kurudishwa tena katika toba that's what it says ndivyo ndivyo inavyosema and that's what the almighty god says that means that word will be fulfilled na hivyo ndivyo anavyosema Mungu mkuu. Hiyo inamaanisha neno lake litatimilizwa. We have also read from scriptures like Second Peter. Tumesoma tena kutoka kwa maandiko kama vile waraka wa pili wa Petro chapter 2 verses 19 to 22 which says Mlango wa pili mstari wa 19 hadi 22 unaosema Your final condition is worse than you were in the beginning when you recycle back to sin Hali yako ya mwisho itakuwa mbaya sana kuliko ile ya kwanza wakati ule unarudi katika dhambi We have also read scriptures like Hebrews chapter 10 verses 26 to 31 Tumesoma tena maandiko kama Waibrania mlango ni wa kumi, mstari ni wa 26 hadi 31 26 saying if we deliberately keep on sinning after receiving the knowledge of the truth 26 unaosema ikiwa tutaendelea katika dhambi kimaksudi baada ya kupokea ufahamu wa ukweli No more sacrifice for sin is left for us Haibaki tena dhabihu ya dhambi kwa ajili yetu That means God will fulfill to the letter hiyo inamaanisha Mungu atatimiliza mambo yote every single word in these scriptures here ambayo amenena katika maandiko kwa neno lake hapa 
and that means it is not God's plan that you recycle back to sin. Na hiyo inamaanisha si mpango wa Mungu kwamba wewe urudi tena katika dhambi. You understand somebody? Je umeelewa mtu? So it is not the plan of God that you go back to sin. Kwa hivyo sio mpango wa Mungu kwamba urudi katika dhambi. And today I'm going to talk on some of the basic issues, personal issues that you deal with. Na leo ninaenda kunena kuhusu mambo ya kimsingi, mambo ya kibinafsi unayokabiliana nayo. As a Christian and I'll bring you to a point. Kama Mkristo na nitakuleta hadi kwa kiwango where you can be able to review yourself, to re-examine yourself and say Lord, ever since I became a Christian have I grown in faith? Ambapo unaweza kujichunguza tena kibinafsi kama mtu na useme bwana tangia nilipofanyika mkristo je nimekomana kukua katika imani have i grown in these things here je nimekuwa katika haya mambo hapa and if the answer is no then why haven't i grown na kama jibu ni hapana ni kwa nini basi sijakuwa the church failed because the church has been an infant for a very long time kanisa lianguka kwa sababu limekuwa ni mtoto mchanga kwa muda mrefu sana the church did not grow that is you you are the church Kanisa halikukuwa yani wewe wewe ndiye kanisa. You became an infant for a very long time. Umefanyika mtoto kwa muda mrefu sana. The Bible tells us that when you are young, Biblia inatuambia kwamba wakati ulikuwa mchanga, and you begin to grow in the issues of God. Na ukaanza kwa katika mambo ya kiungu. Even as a child when a child begins to grow, they begin with milk and then they go to solid food. Hata kama mtoto wakati mtoto anaanza kukua, anaanza na maziwa alafu anaanza chakula kigumu. Then become stronger. Alafu anafanyika mwenye nguvu zaidi. But when you are young, lakini wakati wewe ni mchanga, you are vulnerable. So in the same way as a young Christian, you are very vulnerable. Unahatarishwa sana kwa hivyo kwa njia ile ile wewe kama Mkristo mchanga uko unaathirika au una hatari mingi unless you grow ijapokuwa ukue and it's different levels of growing na ni katika viwango tofauti vya kukua even when you are called to ministry hata wakati unaitwa katika huduma you have to grow in those areas lazima ukue katika hizo sehemu even when you are called to different aspects of serving the lord you have to grow in those areas hata wakati unaitwa katika vipengee tofauti vya kumtumikia bwana lazima ukue katika hizo sehemu even i i am still in the process of growing father you can never stop growing in these things hata mimi ningali katika hatua ya kuendelea kukoma maana hauwezi kuacha au kukoma kukua katika mambo haya it depends on where you are at and what the nature of the calling is inalingana wewe uko wapi na asili ya mwito wako ni upi but let's look up in the bible and see the book of exodus chapter 30 lakini wacha tuangalie katika biblia na tuone kitabu licha kutoka mlango wake ni wa 30 kisha tuone and see what happened during that time tuona ni nini kilitendeka kwa wakati huo the time of moses ule wakati wa musa how did god clean up these people mungu aliwasafisha vipi watu hawa bringing them from the world bringing them from a system to which they have conformed akiwatoa kutoka duniani akiwatoa katika mtindo ambao walikuwa wameungamanishwa nao to a system to which they were built katika ule mtindo ambao walikuwa wamejengeka ndani yao all of you ninyi nyote wherever you were before you became christians popote mlipokuwa kabla hamjakuwa wa kristo you built your lives based on the world system Mulijenga maisha yenu mkizingatia mitindo ya kidunia but today lakini leo let us look at what god wants you to go through hebu tazame kile ambacho bwana angependa mpitie in order to come to the rightful confirmation hivi kwamba mkafikie ule muundo mnaofaa and i want you to understand that is a painful process it is a process of pain when god will call you when you're pledging allegiance here nataka ujue kwamba ni hatua ya uchungu wakati bwana atakuwa amekuita wakati bwana atakuwa nakuleta kwake ukijitoa wakfu kwake when he will call you he will cause you to leave certain things wakati atakuita atakusababisha uache mambo fulani but i want you to know that is a painful process lakini nataka ujue kwamba ni hatua yenye uchungu and that is the process that was called crucifying your flesh na hiyo ndio hatua iliyoitwa kusulubisha mwili wako and carrying your cross and following christ na kubeba msalaba wako na kumfuata kristo let us see way back in the bible what happened to the children of israel hebu tuone pale nyuma katika biblia nini kilitokea kwa wana wa israeli and the instructions given by god na maagizo waliopewa na mungu chapter 30 of the book of exodus kitabu ni cha kutoka mlango wake wa 30 in the name of jesus katika jina la yesu cleansing the process of cleansing utakaso natazama hatua ile ya utakaso verse 17 i'm reading down mstari wa 17 nasoma kuendelea pale chini let's see where we can reach with this on here hebu tuone tafika wapi na hii hapa he says anasema 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Kisha Bwana akamwambia Musa, Make a bronze basin with its bronze stand for washing. Place it between the tent of the meeting and the altar. Fanya na birika la shaba na tako lake la shaba ili kuogea nawe utaliweka kati ya hema ya kukutania na madhabahu and put the water in it nawe utalitia maji Aaron and his sons that wash their hands and their feet with the water from it na Haruni na wanawe wataosha mikono yao na miguu yao humo whenever they enter the tent of the meeting na hapo waingia hapo ndani ya hema ya kukutania they shall wash with the water so that they will not die watajiosha majini ili wasife listen to that sikia hiyo and when they approach the altar to minister by presenting an offering made to the Lord by fire au watakapo ikaribia madhabahu ili watumike kumteketezea Bwana sadaka ya moto they shall wash their hands wataosha mikono yao and feet na miguu yao so that they will not die ili kwamba wasife That's the second time he says that, you know. Unaona hiyo ni mara ya pili anavyosema hivyo. And then this is to be a lasting ordinance. Na neno hili litakuwa kwao amri ya milele for Aaron and his descendants for generations to come. Kwa yeye na kwa wazao wake Haruni katika vizazi vyao vyote. Now look at this somebody. Sasa tazama hapa mtu. God had just gotten these people from a world system. Mungu alikuwa amewatoa tu hawa watu kutoka kwa mtindo wa kidunia. They were not clean in his eyes. Hawakuwa wasafi machoni pake. And he was beginning to teach them worship. Na alikuwa anaanza kuwafunza kuabudu. Essentially what I'm talking about today. Kimsingi kile ambacho nanena kuhusu leo hii. Is worship. Ni kuabudu. God created you to worship. Worship him. Mungu alikuumba umwabudu yeye. The sole reason for which you were created is to worship him. Sababu ya pekee iliyofanya ukaumbwa ni kumwabudu yeye. So when God says, Kwa hivyo wakati Mungu anasema, He wants to sanctify you. Anataka kukutakasa. That means he wants to prepare you for worship. Hiyo inamaanisha anataka kukuandaa kwa ajili ya kumwabudu. And you see the process that God was passing them through. Na unaona ile hatua ambayo Bwana alikuwa anawapitishia. So they can be able to worship him. Hivi kwa wapata kumwabudu. Anasema inua hiyo mikono mitakatifu kisha umwabudu. Na angalia kile alikuwa anawapitishia. He was giving specific instructions. Alikuwa anapeana maagizo maalum and calling it an ordinance, a covenant with them. Na alikuwa anawaambia amri agano pamoja nao. And it says they shall wash their hands and feet and that basin is made of a specific element. Na anasema wataosha mikono yao na miguu yao na ile besini ilikuwa imetengezwa kwa kitu au chuma maalum. And then be holy in his eyes. Alafu wawe watakatifu machoni pake. And they shall do so so they may not die. Na watafanya hivyo hivi kwamba wasife. So they were beginning to understand that going to be in the presence of God. Kwa hivyo walikuwa wameanza kuelewa kwamba huenda kukuwa katika uwepo wa Bwana. God Almighty and this is a serious process. Mungu mkuu na hii ni hatua ya kumaanisha. And we are going to read a little bit further. Na tutaenda kusoma chini yake zaidi. When God calls you as a Christian. Wakati Mungu anakuita kama mkristo. It is a holy calling. Huo ni mwito mtakatifu. And I have preached this to you over and again. Na nimewahubiria hii mara na mara tena. And I've said you essentially move from outside. Na nimesema kimsingi utasonga kutoka nje into the holy of holies. Kuingia patakatifu pa patakatifu. That is the holy place where there is judgment we know that already. Hapo ni mahali patakatifu sana ambapo pako na hukumu na hiyo tujua tayari. We know that the high priest tunajua kwamba kuhani mkuu did not enter there until they prepare themselves for three days. Alikuwa haingi pale hadi ajiandae kwa siku tatu and they fasted and they abstained from touching their women their wives na walifunga na kujikana hata kushika wake zao they abstained from all sin and they tied bells on their feet wakawachana na dhambi zote na wakafungiwa kengele katika miguu yao because if you were not sitting right in the presence of god ivi kwamba kama hauko kwa umeketi sawa katika uwepo wa mungu you were stricken ulipigwa There was judgment there. Kulikuwa na hukumu pale. That's why he repeats it. He says otherwise they will die. Na ndio sababu anairudia, anasema tena watakufa la sivyo. So they may not die. Hivi kwamba wasife. So when God calls you as a Christian, kwa hivyo wakati Mungu anakuita kama mkristo, it is a holy calling. Ni mwito mtakatifu. 
He's calling you to walk right into the holy of holies. Anakuita utembee uingie moja kwa moja hadi patakatifu pa patakatifu. Because the curtain kwa sababu pazia that was separating the outer court and the inner court is now ruptured. Ambayo ilikuwa inatenga nyua za nje na patakatifu pa patakatifu sasa imepasuliwa. And he's calling you to go in there. Na yanakuita uingie pale ndani. And there are a lot of other scriptures you can read later. Na kuna maandiko mengi mengine ambayo unaweza kujisomea pale baadaye. About what you offer when you go in there. Kuhusu kile ambacho utapeana wakati unaingia pale ndani. The calling as a Christian is actually to offer the blood of Jesus to the Father because that's the only sacrifice the Father receives. Lakini mwito kwa Kristo kwa hakika ni kuweza kupeana au kutoa sadaka ya damu ya Yesu kwa Baba kwa sababu hiyo ndio dhabihu ya pekee ambayo Baba anaipokea. And let us see how it continues here. Na hebu tuone jinsi anavyoendelea hapa with the anointing oil. Kwa mafuta ya upako. Verse 22. And he says, Then the Lord said to Moses, Take the following fine spices 500 shekels of liquid myrrh half as much that's about 250 shekels of fragrant cinnamon 250 shekels of fragrant cane 500 shekels of cassia all according to the sanctuary shekel and a hin a hin of olive oil a hin is a measure of olive oil mstari wa 22 kisha bwana akasema na Musa na kumwambia jitwalie manukato yaliyo bora Manemane mbichi shekeli tano na mdalasini wenye harufu nzuri nusu ya kiasi hicho yapata shekeli mbili hamsini yani shekeli mbili na hamsini na kane shekeli mbili na hamsini na kida shekeli tano kwa kuiandamana shekeli ya pahali patakatifu na mafuta ya zaituni kiasi cha vibaba vitano yani kipimo kiwango cha mafuta ya mzaituni make these into a sacred anointing oil a fragrant blend the work of a perfume it will be a sacred anointing oil then use it to anoint the tent of meeting and the ark of the testimony and the table and all its articles the lampstands and its accessories and the altar of incense and the altar of the burnt offering and all its utensils and the basins with its stand You shall consecrate them so they will be most holy and whatever touches them will be holy. Nawe utayafanya mafuta ya kutiwa matakatifu, marhamu iliyochanganywa kwa kazi ya ustadi ya mtengenezaji manukato yatakuwa ni mafuta matakatifu ya kutiwa. Nawe utaipaka hema ya makutano kwa mafuta hayo na hilo sanduku la ushuhuda na hiyo meza na vyombo vyake vyote na kinara cha taa na vyombo vyake na madhabahu ya kufukizia uvumba na madhabahu ya kuteketezea sadaka pamoja na vyombo vyake vyote na birika na tako lake nawe utavitakasa vitu hivyo ili we vitakatifu sana tena kila kivigusacho vyombo vile kitakuwa kitakatifu nawe utawatia haruni mafuta na wanawe na kuwatakasa ili wanitumikie katika kazi ya ukuhani listen to me nisikize I'm taking you way back so you can understand the ways of God. Ninawarudisha pale nyuma ili mpate kuelewa njia za Mungu. The Lord told me to teach you this. He said take them back so they can understand my ways. Bwana aliniambia niwafunze haya. Aliniambia wafunze ili waweze kunirudia wajue njia zangu. Now listen to me. Hebu nisikize. God was preparing a preparation. Bwana alikuwa anafanya maandalizi for sanctifying the sanctuary. Ya kutakasa patakatifu pake even the altar na hata madhabahu you see they were touching even the ark of the covenant that is the throne that is where the glory of god comes and sits waona walikuwa wanaguza hata sanduku la agano hiyo ndiyo enzi hapo ndipo utukufu wa Mungu ulikuwa unakuja na kuketi and he was giving specific instructions na alikuwa anapeana maagizo maalum on how this place should be sanctified and clean kuhusiana na vile mahali hapa panatakikana patakasike na kusafishwa for worship prepared for worship kwa ibada pakiwa pameandaliwa kwa sababu ya kuabudu and at the end he says so those that are coming should also touch it with holy hands na pale mwisho anasema hata wale ambao wanakuja wapaguze na mikono iliyo mitakatifu so when god calls you kwa hivyo Mungu anapokuita into his sanctuary for worship katika hekalu lake katika kuabudu the first most important thing is are you sanctified from sin kitu cha kwanza cha muhimu kabisa 
kabisa ni kwamba je umetakasika kutokana na dhambi have you been separated from sin je umetengwa kutokana na dhambi and i'm going to bring you today to a place where you begin understanding that we have not worship god right naenda kuwaleta kwa kiwango ambacho mtaanza kujua kwamba hatujaabudu mungu jinsi inavyopasa because we came from out maana tulitoka kule nje and we did not even sanctify ourselves na hata hatukujitakasa kibinafsi and we have sat in the church na tumeketi kanisani with sin na dhambi but i've also told you lakini pia nimekwisha kuambieni that is a painful process kwamba ni hatua ya uchungu that means there has to be a pain we have to go through some pain here hiyo inamaanisha lazima kuwa na uchungu lazima tupitie uchungu kiasi hapa and i'm not going to read much of the other scriptures na sitasoma wingi wa maandiko yale mengine one of them is the book of jeremiah 18 moja wapo ni kitabu cha yeremia mlango wa 18 just read it later Utaisoma baadaye. Jeremiah 18 tells you Yeremia 18 inakuambia that when the father removes you from out kwamba wakati baba anakutoa kule nje you need to be broken by him so he can work you as the potter works on the wheel you know unahitaji kuvunjwa naye ivi kwamba kufanyie kazi jinsi mfinyanzi anavyofanyia kazi chungu chake katika gurudumu so he can break you through kwamba aweze kukuvunja vunja zaidi that means he needs to break that confirmation of the world hiyo inamaanisha anatakikana avunje vunja ule mtindo ulio ndani yako wa kidunia whatever you liked in the world chochote ulichokipenda katika dunia there are many things you did in the world kuna vitu vingi ulivyofanya duniani he needs to remove them break them from you and today we are coming to you i want to be more specific anahitaji kuvivunja kuviondoa kwako na leo tunakuja kwako lazima tuwe wa maalum wa kibinafsi kabisa i'll get very personal today leo hii nitaenda kibinafsi kabisa so you can understand the things in you kwamba uweze kuelewa vitu vilivyo ndani yako that god wants to break and destroy ambavyo mungu anataka kuvivunja na kuviharibu so that he can use you hivi kwamba pate kutumia i want you to understand that god cannot use you nataka uelewe kwamba mungu hawezi kukutumia even receive you the way you are hata kukupokea jinsi ulivyo if you have not shared all those things of the world ikiwa haujawachilia mbali vile vitu vyote vya kidunia he cannot use you hawezi kukutumia let us be very clear about this butuwe wazi kabisa kuhusiana na haya there is a process of growing kuna hatua ya kukua and you can grow by learning and growing and learning na wewe unaweza kukua kwa kujifunza na kukua na kujifunza but if you come from the world lakini kama utatoka duniani when you have things from the world still attached in your heart wakati ungali na vitu kutoka duniani vingali vimeunganishwa kwa moyo wako and when one side of your heart receives the lord and you are holding on to the other things that means you have not received the lord na wakati ambapo upande moja wa moyo wako umempokea bwana na ule upande mwingine ungali umeshikilia kwa mambo mengine hiyo inamaanisha hakujampokea bwana that's why i'm bringing you today na hapo ndipo nakuleta leo hili so i want you at the end of this to examine yourself kwa hivyo nataka wewe binafsi baada ya mafundisho haya ujichunguze have i really shared those things of the world je nimeweka mbali nimevitupilia mbali vitu vya kiduniani there are many of them we don't have to discuss them gossip lying kuna vingi sana baadhi yao hahitaji hata kuvitaja masengenyo uongo talk on phone backbiting kunena katika simu masengenyo those are basic small things that you find across the christian you know na hivi ni vitu vidogo vidogo vya kimsingi ambavyo unapata katika nyanja ya ukristo wote wote lying backbiting talking doing things you know uongo kusengenya kuongea kuhusu wengine na mambo kama hayo kufanya vitu kama hivyo talk about all these little things that happen do those things belong to god kuongea ongea na mambo madogo kama haya je hivi vitu vyote ni vya Mungu kweli that's where we are going to today na hapo ndipo tunapoenda leo hii look at the instructions is giving moses he says they should clean up worshiping god is not a job angalia vitu ambavyo au maagizo anayomwambia Musa anamwambia itabidi wajisafishe kumwabudu Mungu kwa kusema ukweli sio kwa mzaha worshiping god you have been called as a christian you have been called into a deeper worship with god Kuabudu Mungu kama Mkristo sio mzaha kwa hakika umeitwa kuabudu Mungu katika vilindi vya kiundani kabisa. That is the fellowship we have with God. Na huo ndio ushirika ulio nao na Mungu. That is where he is resident. Hapo ndipo anapodumu. Worship is where he is. Sasa kuabudu ibada hapo ndipo alipo. You were created to worship God. Wewe uliumbwa kumwabudu Mungu. There is no way you are going to worship the jealous God when part of you still conforms to the world. 
Hakuna vile unaenda kumabudu Mungu huyu mwenye wivu wakati sehemu moja yako ingali ina miundo ya kidunia. Paul was talking to them. Paul said time will come when there will be need for the perfection of the saint. This is the time. Paulo alikuwa na wanenea. Paulo akasema wakati utafika ambapo kutakuwa na hitaji la kukamilishwa kwa wateule. Na huu ndio wakati. We have to make sure we can re-examine ourselves. Lazima tuhakikishe kwamba tunaweza kujichunguza upya. Look at ourselves. Tujitazame. Have I been perfected? If there is anything I need to shed, shed it now.